This is Glenn Brad reporting at the Robert L. Bradshaw International Airport. Today we are undertaking a tour of the facilities to see exactly what work has been done, what has been completed, and how far the infrastructure is ready to receive the first major batch of passengers coming in on the 7th of November, primarily from the United States on American Airlines. We understand that British Airways is not going to be coming on the 7th, and a new schedule for that airline will be determined at a later date. The media tour took us through the departure process, where we observed how airline security and immigration officials will process passengers. Noticeable were the personal protection equipment worn by officials, numerous hand sanitizing stations, and social distancing signs on the floor. Seating 2 has also been marked to help ensure that there is social distancing while passengers await their flights out of the RLB International Airport. On the arrival side, the setup is much more elaborate as one takes into account the arrival of passengers from high-risk countries such as the United States, Canada and the United Kingdom. When passengers disembark from their aircraft, they are directed to the welcoming center, an air-conditioned tent erected on the aircraft parking apron. Their passengers are allowed time to have their body temperatures normalized before entry to the airport arrival section. Should a passenger be deemed high risk or showing signs of infection, that passenger is channeled to the isolation center located on the aircraft parking apron where a COVID-19 test will be performed. Other passengers will exit the screening room into the immigration hall for processing and immigration booths have sneeze guards to protect immigration officers. And of course, at all times, everyone is mandated to wear the mask, covering both the nose and the mouth. From immigration, a passenger will descend into the Customs and Baggage Claim Hall. Again, social distancing is required, and Customs officers are protected behind enclosed areas with plexiglass and sneeze guards. On exiting the arrival terminal, a passenger is processed for secure transport to their designated hotel or quarantining site. Minister of Tourism Lindsay Grant spoke with the media and answered several questions. He was supported by Ms. Raquel Brown, CEO of the St. Kitts Tourism Authority, and by Ms. Tafida Stewart, the Chief Financial Officer of the St. Christopher A and C Ports Authority. We simply cannot be too careful. The extensive input from the medical professionals and from the NIAC into the retrofit works and the protocols have given us tremendous comfort that as a team, we can certainly minimize the spread of the COVID-19. Now that the borders are open, and while SCASPA and NIOC, the health professionals and by extension the cabinet, have put measures in place to protect you, we cannot successfully tackle the spread of the COVID-19 without each and every one of us taking personal responsibility for our own safety. So I encourage you to wear your masks properly, sanitize, and physical distance. Our room stock is no longer 1,800 rooms. It's 620 with the seven properties that are in currently allowed for international travel. For the other airlines, such as Delta and United, those will remain as Saturday flights and they're to be determined shortly depending on what's happening in the United States if the service will continue because they're waiting just to see as everything is fluid. We're expecting approximately 120 persons or so um, coming off of the first flight of the American Airlines and that is likely to be stepped up over a period of weeks to approximately three flights per week but we'll see as time goes by. But certainly here at the Robert L. Bradshaw Airport um, the facilities are practically complete and there is some training um, going on and uh, we are certain that we can be ready for the opening of the borders of Sinkis and Nevis. Glenn Barrett reporting from Robert L. Bradshaw International Airport.